Right, so we're going to give you a brief background of where we've come from tonight, um, starting in 2002. Um, got, we, there was a project set up to explore the provision for learning development at Huddersfield. Um, it was with funding from Hefke, and, um, and then the university took over the funding, so they got involved then at that stage. And the idea was said to um, set up some kind of academic skills tutors provision. Now, we don't have central provision in Huddersfield. In, you know, it, it's all within the schools, and this is what was built up from this. And this is one of the findings from that particular Um, from this, the advantages of learning, having learning de development with school was picked up by the QAA um, on an internal audit. So it was taken up at strategic level, and that, I think that's an important point that we need to make. It, you know, it, the, it was a top-down decision that it was a good idea to have learning development within the schools and not centrally. Um, and we were actually noted in the institutional audit as an example of good practice. So that's <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the initial sort of target when it was a project, and we're all intended for contracts at this stage, was 200 contacts per year, and that was for about five or six academic skills tutors. But as you can see from the graph here, we exceeded that sort of expectation quite considerably. And we're now at the stage where there's 14 of us, and that's on um, the main campus and two centres, and again, all within um, the different schools. And there's another appointment due to be made very soon. And we're all now on academic contracts as well, which I think puts us in a really good position to liaise with academic subject discipline staff. They see us at their level. Um, and we also, also contribute to research in that respect and sort of get ourselves out there. And I think we've done over 70 publications since 2004, well, contributions, I should say, conference papers, journal articles, and so on. So, as these numbers, you know, sort of grew, we saw the need for multiple strategies, really. We had to go beyond the one-to-one -one tutorial, which was the original remit of the, the project. If you want to know more about, sort of, our journey, um, do have a look at our article. It's in the Journal of um, Learning Development in Higher Education, the Aldean Journal. And then, as I said, we needed to look at strategies beyond the one-to-one -one tutorial. So we started doing workshops within curricula and outside. Sometimes they were parachuted in, a bit like Sandra was saying. Um, online resources, we all have delicious pages, each academic skills tutor, social bookmarking, so we can really tailor the resources to our particular students for our subject discipline. And we try and embed that within teaching sessions we might do as well, flag it up to the students, it's not a standalone resource. And also there are several peer initiatives going on across different schools as well. So a whole range of different strategies to try and meet the needs of the most students possibly in different ways. But the next step really for us, as I said, was really to move beyond perhaps workshops where we just parachuted in to really start to develop a relationship with staff at the curriculum development stage to make our provision more sustainable. Okay, so um, working in the disciplines, I think, is one of the things that Sandra mentioned and that, that we try very hard. And one of the crucial decisions I think we made, and I think that's been already discussed, is you work with the converted. We decided that we'd really, really tried hard and we'd worked, you know, worked our socks off to get into some places and we were just, you know, not getting there. So we took a conscious decision. Um, and when I say we, as I say, the, the learning developers at, at Huddersfield are not in a unit, they're not central. Um, and, and we don't really have somebody above us saying, you learning developers must do this, we're all within different schools. But we do work together organically and we do make decisions and we meet um, and, and share good practice and you know we really decided that the best way to do it was just go with the people that really understood what we were about like Mark <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and you know some of us worked specifically on modules with <coughs> curriculum design and there are some examples on the poster up there that you can look at later of three 
different modules, um, you know, nice little acronyms that I won't go over and bore you with now. Um, but three different modules in three different schools, which which take completely different approaches. Um, and so, so you know, and and that fed into, if you like, the project that Anamanda and I um, went on to. Start. Yes, I think there were several initiatives, you know, academic skills just really trying to push to embed skills within the curriculum across the university and the different schools. We wanted to try and consolidate that and bring it all together and also take it forward. So at the end of 2009, we applied for teaching and learning funding within the university to really sort of have an embedding skills, integrating learning development into the curriculum project and we were successful in getting that. And then she went on maternity leave and left me too much. <laughs> <laughs> And we really want to learn to share examples of good practice, really to promote what we're doing to let say, look, here's some case studies, why don't you try some of these ideas? And then we put it together in the resource you can see here, there's a nice little postcard from your packs of the URL. But we're going to show you that this afternoon. We'd really like the comments and feedback on that. Now one of the key findings of this project was that we wanted to, well we recommended to the University Teaching and Learning Committee that our resources and project really became part of the validation process for all new courses. We're really pleased that they accepted that recommendation, so we really felt we got to that strategic level. And this is now fed on to almost the next stage of the project. We've applied the funding um, to sort of extend the project to the next level. So I think to make sure that the validation requirements sort of gets implemented successfully. We thought we needed to sort of create resources for staff to be able to, to do that so they can view their curriculum holistically um, across the whole course and progressively. And that's why we also decided to focus on the second year because one of the other findings from the project was that um, when we used sort of a mapping team template, which was part of the resource that we created, Academic skills, learning development tend to be front loaded into the first year. Assessed in the second year, but no real teaching, and then teaching picked up again in the final year. So it wasn't progressive. So this project, if we get the funding, will hopefully identify progression points and also create resources for staff, sort of to using curriculum design and delivery and also helping with the validation process. But with that second year angle to it and how they can engage second year students and make sure that you know, learning events progressive throughout the whole course. So one of the other things we've been looking at is adding case studies from other universities. Um, when we did a workshop at Leeds, one, again one of the questions we asked people was would you be willing to contribute a case study? And we had um, about a dozen positive responses, so that's in the pipeline. Um, we also went to the HEA event at Glasgow a couple of weeks ago and there were a few really good ones there that we saw and we, you know, tapped them in the lobby and said, would you mind uh, if you have a look at art and would you be able to? So, so we've got lots of ideas there from other universities where we can see good examples and share it. Um, one of the other things that came back from our workshop in Leeds, um, we, we asked them, you know, what, what, how could we improve our resource? What would you like to see there? Um, and they said they'd like more proof that things worked. <laughs> yeah, they wanted more staff um, evaluation of the courses, what worked, what didn't, you know, because people do, I mean, you must have seen it yourself where people say, oh, this is what I do in this module, you know, and they've virtually only just written it, um, and they don't actually know, they're not two years down the line and they don't know what went wrong with it and what didn't, so more evaluation, and more student voices, and that's going to be another feature of the, if we get the funding for that other uh, project, that's going to be a big feature of it, you know, um, to actually get student voices on the website as well. Um, and the last one, I suppose, comes to why we're here and you know, this is part of what we're doing is contributing to a national resource. So, um, and that's part of what hopefully you'll all be involved in is that our website will be part of that national resource, part of the answer to what you think you need um, in the future. <laughs>